Hi there, and welcome back to the Ingrain Workshop. I'm Rick, and in today's video, well, today's video is going to the dogs. Really, just one dog. That's right, that dog, Dixie the Shop Dog. Today, she is going to get relocated to a new home and free up the front of the workshop. So let's get started. <music> So this is Dixie's current pen. As you can see, it's right in front of the workshop. I've got an eight foot by 10 foot roll up door along with a 10 by 12 carport. Um, so I'm unable to access the workshop uh, from the roll up door. Uh, this fence here was the only fence that we had to construct uh, from scratch, which is why we chose this area uh, to pin her up. But again, this was always meant to be just temporary and it's now time to relocate her to a permanent home that way i can demolish this fence and open up the front of the workshop and be able to access the workshop and you can see in the distance there there's a, a four by eight uh, kennel with a uh, tarp roof on it and uh, that's where she primarily stays during the day but we just leave it open so she can come and go uh, whenever she wants um, but it is time to uh, relocate her to a new home. So let's get started on that So this is the uh, very back corner of our yard um, And this is where we're going to relocate her to but before I do that this side fence um, Needs to be demolished and a new fence installed So that's what uh, we're going to be working on as soon as we get the uh, new fence installed then we'll take and relocate her kennel, get that all set up, and then we'll uh, also relocate Dixie as well. We're also going to build a fence across the front here, which will have a gate. That way we can get in. She already has water in the very back that uh, we're able to uh, use to fill her bowls and to clean her bowls. So this area here is going to work out great for her. Plus she's got a lot of shade in that back corner which will definitely be nice for her. The first thing I had to do was remove the metal fence from the uh, wooden fence post. But instead of removing every individual staple, uh, it was just easier to put a metal carbide blade uh, inside my skill saw and then just take my skill saw and cut on both sides of the post to cut the metal fencing loose uh, from the post. And this way I can get all the metal off the fence and then I can do the same thing with the wood slats, except put a, a wood blade back in the skill saw and cut those loose, which I'll do next. Now with the metal fencing removed, I've got my uh, skill saw that has a, a wood blade in it, and I'm just going to go down and cut all the rails loose from the post. And you'll see me throwing them off camera here. I've got a burn pile off to the side where I'm just taking these old uh, rails. I think they're one by sixes and uh, just taking and burning those in the burn pile. Uh, this is going to go pretty quick. Um, and then once I get all the, the rails removed from the fence post, then I can start addressing or start uh, pulling up the fence post. This is my preferred method of removing fence post. I'm going to take about a 36 inch, 48 inch length of uh, chain with uh, two hooks on each end, uh, wrap it around the, the bottom of the post and then wrap it around, uh, I believe it's a 36 inch, maybe a 48 inch farm jack, and just literally jack the post directly out of the ground. I've got a separate video uh, that I did, and I'll leave a link uh, in this video here uh, that goes into more detail on removing a post with a farm jack, and also posts that are that are rotted and, and still able to get the, uh, the, the bottom of the post out of the ground. Uh, with the jack without having to dig it out. Once I got all the fence posts removed, I went and got my six inch auger and started just re-drilling out uh, the existing holes. Um, it didn't take that long since the holes were already for the most part dug out. I just wanted to make sure that they were cleaned out and dug down to the proper depth. Um, and in this particular hole, it was right next to the tennis courts and the uh, sub base for the tennis courts, I believe was crushed cement, cement. 
So there was some cement in the hole that I had to dig out um, because it wasn't allowing me to auger out the hole. And you'll see this big chunk of cement. Um, and once I got that out of the hole, I was able to just go ahead and finish it up with the auger. And I just went around the whole perimeter, uh, just cleaning up each hole and getting it ready for the uh, new post installation. Now I'm going to take a new 4 inch by 4 inch by 8 foot long post. I'm going to measure down 54 inches because that's how much of the post I want out of the ground. And then I'm going to cut off, I believe, around 6 to 7 inches off the bottom of the post uh, because my holes just are not dug that deep. Um, so this will allow me enough room to fit the post within the hole uh, at the current depths at which they're dug out. That way I don't have to dig them out by hand. I just dug them out as deep as I could with the auger and that's as deep as they're going to be and it would it's just easier for me to go back and cut the ends off. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to cut the uh, the end off the board and then I'm going to take a 2x4 and I'm going to screw it to the 54 inch line that I had previously marked on the post. And now what this is going to do, once I screw this 2x4 onto the post, then when I sit the post in the hole, the, this board will hold it out of, the, out of the hole 54 inches. So I'll know that my post is exactly 54 inches above the finished grade. And this will establish my first corner post. And I'll, I'll do this for just the corner post only. Once I get the corner post installed, then I'll take and run a line between the corner post and then install all the intermediate post. And you can see here how it works. It just sits in the hole and the 2x4 just holds it 54 inches above the finished grade. Now I'm just going to add a couple of bags of concrete and mix it with water. Um, and I'm also going to make sure that the, the post is plumb as I'm adding the concrete. I, you'll see me here with the 4 foot level uh, just checking it to make sure it's plumb before I put in all the concrete at one time. So I'll just put in probably half a bag, get it plumb, water it down, then put in another half a bag. Um, but I do believe I put in two full bags at each post location. With the corner post installed, I can now run a string line from the top of one corner post all the way over to the other corner post and then run it also along the bottom. This way my fence line is now established and once this is done now I can go through and start setting up the intermediate post. Unlike the corner post, uh, when I set these intermediate posts I'm not going to need to use a 2x4 screw to the post at 54 inches to keep the post out of the ground. I can just throw the post in the hole and then put in enough fill or concrete to raise it up to the height of the string line and then I'll know based on the height of that string line the post will be at 54 inches or level with the corner post that way all the posts regardless of how the grade goes will all be in line with the uh, corner the two corner post okay so yesterday we uh, we set the corner post and also we installed or I installed all the uh, the interior post as well so all the posts are set now it's time to come back and install the 1x6 uh, wood slats or the full rail, uh, hence the, the uh, title full rail, full rail fence. You might uh, have noticed uh, I'm going to use a template and this is the, uh, the same template that, uh, or jig that I used uh, when we installed the fence around the front of the property. I kept them because I knew that we were going to slowly be replacing the fence along the entire perimeter of the property. So here they are again. If, uh, if you want to know um, how to build these, uh, these jigs, I'll leave a, a link in the video um, to, to where you can uh, view this and see how this is uh, constructed. And so now I'm going to start installing the 1x6 wood slats along the fence line. So here you can see how easy it is to install the four rails using these jigs. And I can pretty much you know just go down the entire fence line pretty much rinse and repeat. Uh, this is a very long fence line so it didn't take me long to just knock it all out. 
again using the jig is definitely the way to go and I would highly recommend that. Once I was done installing the four rails I called, called in some reinforcements and had Z come out and uh, stain the fence and she's been great about staining the entire fence around the perimeter of the property. We did a lot of uh, staining along the front of our uh, yard and she's picking it up here and going to go ahead and knock this out which is, was a big help to me. Okay so after missing yesterday the supervisor came in and exercised a change order uh, to move the gate from this location here which I think you saw me take the hinges off uh, the post yesterday and I took the hinges off of this post here but sh the supervisor seems to think that the gate was in the middle instead of over here by this post so I'm going to take and have to drill <clears throat> a new hole here uh, you can probably see it's marked orange so I'm just going to break out the auger and auger it out and then finish it up with the post hole diggers With the wood fence now complete, I could focus my attention on Dixie's kennel area. Um, I just took some uh, orange spray paint and just sprayed out the, uh, the corners of where the kennel was going to be located. And then I brought in some sand and I'm just going to level out some sand just for the base of the kennel. And then once I get the sand compacted and level, then I'm going to bring in some, I believe it was 12 inch square pavers and start laying the pavers down. Her previous kennel just had a dirt floor, it just sat directly on, on the ground. Uh, this time I wanted to uh, sit it on top of some concrete pavers. That way I think it'd be cooler for her to lay down on and just make her more comfortable to have a, a, a nice cool surface uh, to lay on top of. Since I was repurposing these pavers, they were, they were pretty dirty. So I just broke out the pressure washer and just gave all the pavers just a good pressure washing. I did have to go back to one of the big box stores and pick up, I think, maybe eight or ten uh, new pavers. But once I pressure washed everything, everything seemed to match and came out uh, really nice. And once I got that all cleaned up, then I started uh, installing the kennel. Uh, the kennel is pretty easy to put together. It just comes in uh, pieces. And, uh, you know, once you uh, level them up, uh, you basically just screw the top and the bottom panels together. Um, and like I said, I believe it's a four by eight kennel. Once I got the uh, perimeter walls up, then I uh, ordered a new tarp because the old tarp had been ripped. Um, so I went ahead and put a new black tarp on the roof and the kennel actually turned out really nice. So here's the uh, finished kennel. I also had a, uh, a, a reused concrete slab that uh, I just put underneath the water so we could sit her bowls on top of that. Um, and then as you can see here, the, uh, the four rail fence is 
pretty much complete. I do have to go back and install a gate. Um, I'm also going to need to install some uh, wire mesh uh, along the inside of the fence. And that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm basically using just a, uh, a homemade fence stretcher, uh, just a piece of flat bar. And then I've got a jig with a couple of, uh, I think, three hooks on the end of it with just a uh, ratchet strap. And then um, I've tied off the end of the ratchet strap to the uh, other fence post. And then I, I ratchet it tight to pull it tight. And then I fasten the actual metal uh, with pneumatic galvanized staples to the post. And then I shift it down to the next uh, section as soon as I'm done stapling it in place here. I can take the, uh, the tension off the uh, fence and then just shift everything down to the next post. And this works out pretty good and, uh, and definitely uh, is something that I need for Dixie because uh, she's a digger and a climber. Uh, so hopefully this will help contain her. So with the metal fence installed, I can start installing the gates. Uh, the gates are, you know, found at uh, Rural King or Tractor Supply. Again, these are just old gates. This is a gate off her uh, existing uh, pin, um, and I'm just putting uh, the latch in place, just lining everything up, um, making sure the gates plumb, making sure the latch is in line uh, with the with the gate, and then I'll take and screw the latch to the post, and that's going to probably wind up the uh, the gate installation. video helps you out in your project. If it did, please leave it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll leave a link in the description below to all the products that I use. I want to thank everyone for watching the video and please feel free to share. And as always, get out there and create, build, and inspire. This is Rick with the Ingrain Workshop. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.